triangle proofs again. Hey everybody, let's do some triangle proofs so you can get really good at it and you'll totally know what you're doing and you can say, yes, I can do any triangle proof you throw at me. That's gonna happen, right? 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 No, no, say no, Mrs. Viver, that's not gonna happen, but we're gonna try anyway, ready? We are today gonna talk about ASA and SSS. And this is something that you either have or maybe will do with some patty paper, but I'm not going to go through that right now in the notes. So in your notes, I'd like you to turn doo -doo 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 -doo, to the next page. So up until this point, when we've done triangle proofs, you've learned how to do one way. You've learned that you can prove two triangles congruent if you have a side, an angle, and another side. So three, ten, three things, SAS. Well, that's not the only way to prove triangles congruent. We can also prove them for ASA, angle, side, angle. So if I look at these triangles right here, here's ACB, which makes this A prime, C prime, and B prime. And in the notes it says CAB, this guy, is congruent to CAB, that guy. And AB equals AB, and CBA equals CBA. And if I look, these are two angles in the side in between, also known as the included side. So two angles in the included side, then the triangles are congruent. So if you have ASA, then it's going to work out. Notice the side is in between the angles. That means it's the included side. Okay? So we've got that. Fantastic. I'm just moving some stuff around on my desk here. Okay. So what do I have next here? I want to do some practice with some ASA. So basically now, I know if I look at this picture, when I go to prove those two triangles congruent, the two tools we have in our belt are SAS and ASA. So let's see which one works out. So given M is the midpoint of HP, so M is in the middle of HP, and angle H is congruent to angle P, prove these triangles congruent. Okay, so I'm going to kind of make a plan in my head first before I start writing. In the other videos, I just kind of start going and it's like I knew where I was going from the beginning. I'm going to pause here for a second and say, you should make a plan. You've done enough proofs now that you should be able to plan ahead. So if H equals P, because they told me to, and M is in the middle, if M is the middle, then HM and MP would have to be equal. And this is a bow tie, so these vertical angles are equal. So I'd have this angle right here, I'd have this side, and this angle right here. I have ASA. So I can kind of see a plan going forward and now I can write it out. So I'm going to start with my statements and my reasons. And just to save us time, because it's a video, I'm going to do something that you are absolutely not allowed to do on a test or a quiz. Do not do this on a test or a quiz. However, our first statement is blah, 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 and our first reason is given. Don't ever do that again on a test or a quiz, but we're doing it in the notes. We can live with it. So I was given M is the midpoint, H and P are equal. Then when we talked about our plan, we said M being the midpoint means HM and MP are equal. HM and MP are equal because a midpoint splits a segment into two equal lengths. I need some kind of sentence there that tells me that you know what midpoint means. So HM and MP are equal. And then the other thing that we talked about when we made our plan was this is one of those bow tie looking things. And if it's a bow tie, I've always got vertical angles. So I have, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call this angle one. Oh, don't do that. I'm going to call this angle one. And then we're going to call that angle two and say angle one is congruent to angle two because vertical angles are congruent. And then angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. Fantastic. I have ASA, so I can say what they wanted me to prove, which is GHM is congruent to RPM which is uh, GHM, RPM, A, S, A, congruence. Ta-da! All right, so moving on to number two here, I have AD equals AE, CD equal uh, perpendicular, pardon me, to AB, and B perpendicular to AC. 
prove AB equals ACD. So I'm going to start marking up this diagram and see what that means. So AD equals AE and CD is a perpendicular and BE is a perpendicular. And I'm supposed to prove that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle ACD. So these guys overlap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw them. So I have triangle AEB where I know that AE is right there and I have a right angle here. And then I also have ACD, forgive my awful attempts at drawing a triangle, uh, where I have AD marked and angle D is a right angle. Okay. So I have these two triangles set up and now I want to make a plan. So it looks like I've got some right angles. I have these matching up, but I'm not really sure how I'm going to get the third angle. Well, I am sure I do, but I just can't tell you. So I'm sure. You just might not be sure. So I really want to figure out how I can get these proved congruent. Um, so I'm just going to start writing in this case. So I'm going to have my statements and my reasons. Uh, my statements here are going to be, let's see, my givens, blah, 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 blah. Don't do that on a test or a quiz here, it's fine. That's given. And then two, when I see perpendicular, I think I've said this three times now or twice, and this will be the third time, when you see perpendicular, you need to do two things. One, identify the right angles. Two, state that the right angles are congruent. So let's do that. So I have two right angles. I'm gonna call them angle one and angle two. So D is angle one, E is angle two. So uh, angle one and angle two are right angles. And my reason there is perpendicular lines form right angles. All right, so that's fine. And then the other thing I need to talk about is if I have two right angles, I can automatically say that they are congruent. Angle one is congruent to angle two because all right angles are congruent. So I have all right angles are congruent. I have these sides. All right, well, you know, just if I'm being truthful here, you probably know this is going to be ASA because that's what we're learning about. So if we're learning about ASA, if I have this angle and I have this side, I should probably use this angle up here. So this angle equaled, well, both say A. And if I look on here, they overlap at A. Here is your first introduction to a reflexive angle. So for number four, I am going to say, let's, you know what, keep it with numbers. Angle three is congruent to angle three. You could also call that A if you want. Angle three is congruent to angle three because you know why? It's the reflexive property all over again. But instead of a side, we're doing it for an angle. So by the reflexive property, A equals A, and now I have ASA. So for five, triangle, what did they want? Abe is congruent to triangle ACD by angle, side, angle, congruence. Okie dokie. So there's that one. Now, another new one. Oops. I'm moving so fast. Side, side, side. So instead of SAS, instead of ASA, there's also something called side, side, side. And side, side, side is exactly what you think it is. If you have triangle ABC and you have triangle A prime, C prime, B prime, and you are told that the three sides of this one are equal to the three sides of the other one, then the triangles are equal. So if three sides of one triangle equal three sides of another, we don't need an angle. Three sides is good enough, that's side, side, side. So if you know two sides in the included angle are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. If you know two angles in the included side are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. Or if you know all three sides of one equals all three sides of another, those triangles are congruent too. So we'll come down here and do that. If an AB equals XY, okay, so this whole thing, even through R, equals that whole thing, and AY equals XB, prove that triangle AYB, so this whole guy here, is congruent to X, B, Y, that whole triangle right there. Okay, so these guys do overlap. 
So I have statements. I have reasons. I could draw them out, but I think that's going to be a waste of time here. This one isn't that bad. So I've got my statements. I've got my reason is given. And if two triangles overlap, you usually have some kind of reflexive property. In the last example, it was a reflexive angle. In this example, it's a reflexive side. They overlap on YB. So for step two, I'm going to say YB is equal to YB by the reflexive property. And now, if I erase my shading here, if I look at the diagram, I have this, that, and this guy, this, that, and this guy. I have three sides for each triangle, so I have enough information now to say, you know what? Side, 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 the two triangles are congruent by side, 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 congruence. That's it. All right, this is the last one I'm doing with you. Read it. Z is the midpoint of W, Y, okay, I'm gonna go up dot there. W, X, okay, is two W, Z. Y, X is two Z, Y. Okay, prove the triangles, okay, okay, I think I can handle this. So let's see, if I can handle this, I feel like writing in purple. So I have my statements, I have my reasons, and I'm going to start with my blah 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 givens. And then let's see, Z is the midpoint of WY. Okay, so this is in the middle of these. So if that's a midpoint, these two parts have to be equal. That's what a midpoint does. So WZ is congruent to ZY because a midpoint creates two congruent segments. Okay, and WX, so this guy, is 2WZ, and W, or YX is 2ZY. Hmm, what do I do next? Do you like how I pretend not to know what I'm doing when really I'm literally paid to know this? I'm just pretending, I hope you know that. So what do I do next? Well, if this is two times WZ and that's two times ZY, and WZ and ZY are equal, I can do this. Since two WZ equals WX and WZ equals ZY, I can say two ZY equals WX. Now, why would I do that? Two ZY equals WX because if 2ZY equals WX, and up here 2ZY equals YX, then WX and YX are now congruent. Now how did I do all that? And it's very bizarre, but basically common sense wise, if this is twice that, and this is twice that, and this equals that, I can just do a substitution. It makes sense that if I double two equal things, I get two equal things. So 2ZY equals WX, therefore WX equals YX. I just did substitution twice. I did substitution here, replacing WZ with ZY, and then I did substitution here by saying I replaced the 2ZY with yx from up top. Okay, so that was a weird convoluted way to go about it, but I got there. And then last but not least, the easiest part of the proof, I'm done dealing with my givens. Now I'm just realizing, hey, these two triangles butt up against each other. I've got a reflexive in the middle, xz equals xz by the reflexive property. And that makes the two triangles congruent by SSS. So triangle WXZ and triangle YXZ are congruent by SSS. Okay.
So you should hopefully have a better grip on how to deal with proofs. I know this whole doubling thing was weird. That doesn't happen that often, but you should at least be able to follow me. Um, so we are done with proofs. All right, so here's the joke. All right, so we got to end this with a joke. So here's your joke. What's the difference between an elephant and an apricot? What's the difference between an elephant and an apricot? Nothing, except that the elephant's gray. I know it's really, really terrible, but it's a little bit funny. Um, so here's a better one. What's the difference between an elephant and a wrinkly shirt? You can iron a wrinkly shirt. You can't iron an elephant. Equally terrible. Let's see, what other really bad elephant jokes can I give you? What is gray and has a trunk? A mouse going on vacation. Didn't see that one coming, did you? All right, I'm done now. Have a great day. Bye.